All right, so I just got my brand new bright source dust caps for my Ram 2500's headlights. Um, putting in the uh, HID conversion from uh, Amazon, uh, the Innovited 55 watt kit. Um, I've already put them in uh, without the dust caps, and I'm just being careful to not get it too dirty because uh, I couldn't wait for these things to show up. So I'm going to open this up, and we're going to kind of take a look and see uh, what what they are because you know I've only seen pictures so make sure I don't go too deep because I don't know how it's packaged inside All right so we got the dust covers and then I saw those on the uh, web website, uh, the, the little grommet covers. Um, the lights that I got on the cable already have one of these grommets on it. So I guess, since I'm only putting it in a, on the low light side, um, I should put a grommet on each of these uh, high beam holes since I'm not using HIDs over there. Um, man. These are tight. So, wow. And there's going to be no dust getting past these. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay. There's one. And then. The second one. I kind of want to make sure that I'm not breaking those fins in the middle apart because, you know, it'd probably be fine, but they're not, they're not separated yet. And so if they're not separated, that's a solid chunk of rubber there. And so it's not going to let anything through. So that's cool. These things look pretty well built. Let me go get my old ones and we'll compare the sizes. Okay, so here's the old one, the factory one, all dirty and gross. But uh, as you can see, I guess the they didn't put the gasket on this, so we'll have to reuse that. Uh, it said that on the uh, product page, so I wasn't surprised by that. Um, so it looks like, if you look at this right here, there is a bit more space um, both this way and this way. Um, and then even down here a little bit. So yeah, they're a little bit bigger. Um, I'm just hoping that my lights uh, aren't <laughs> still too big for this new housing so we'll we'll see how that goes let's see about pulling this gasket out and placing it here Rather than have you guys watch as I futz around with this, I'm just gonna pause it and finish it up. So, all right, so I got those gaskets on. There's a couple places where they're not laying perfectly flat, but they're down inside the channel. And once I, you know, screw them on, uh, it'll push that right down and there won't be any, any problems there. All right, some quick steps on how to remove your headlight housing uh, to do this. Um, under each wheel well, there's a little excess panel that gets you behind the, the headlight housing. And then there's that uh, retaining clip that you have to slide up. And that changes the hole here from 
uh, you know, narrow to wide, so it'll go around that thing which is holding the headlight in place uh, from the back. All right, the next thing you need to do is you need to get this uh, shroud off. Um, using a big pry bar for that. You just need to get underneath these little plastic clips and have enough force to go up and uh, pop those. Be gentle. You don't need to totally bear down on it, especially if you've got a, a big pry bar like this. If you're trying to use a screwdriver, you might uh, you might scratch something that you didn't intend to scratch. So once that's off, then it's uh, starting to undo these bolts that are holding on the front uh, grill. All right, so I got my 10 millimeter socket here and this is one of those fancy ratchets that <laughs> kind of gimmicky, but in this case it's kind of handy, you just uh, twist it. But I, I just set the bolts up inside the this little well on the radiator in the order that they came out, hold them in place, and that uh, ensures that I know which, uh, which position to put them back in. The second and third, the middle uh, bolts, are a different thread pattern than the outside ones, too. So you want to make sure that you get them back in the right holes, otherwise, you're not going to thread properly. Consequence of that, these middle ones take a bit longer to unscrew. Okay, and once those are out, just want to carefully pull the retaining clips out because you don't want to break them. It will take a little bit of force to, to get off there. So once that's off, we can move to the headlights themselves. All right, so here's the headlight housing. You got these two uh, bolts holding it on. Same 10 millimeter socket. Um, you start pulling it out. Okay, got that top one out. The bottom one, and this is the reason why I kind of like this uh, fancy ratchet. Um, you got to get in here like this. You don't have a lot of room to ratchet it out. And so, and it's also going through a, a rubber gasket or rubber washer right here. And so the rubber always maintains some resistance on the bolt as you're unscrewing it. So it's just kind of slow going on this one. All right, so now that I got those bolts out, the headlight, I've, re I've freed the clips and uh, it comes out just like this. You can see my hack job of a, of a cover in the meantime, I just used aluminum tape and some silicone uh, tape right here to help keep as much dust out of there and dirt and grime and crap as possible. And it's amazing how much crap has shown up just in the last week. So, I'm glad that I didn't take it through the car wash. Um, anyway, I'm over here so you can see the electrical connector here. Just gotta remove this, which is kind of tricky. There. And now it's free. So, now let's go and take a look at the new covers. Okay, so I've started taking this tape off. It's just aluminum tape that people would normally use on their uh, air conditioning ducting. <laughs> Figure if it's good enough to keep dust and crap out of my air conditioner for years and years, it's probably good enough to keep the dust and crap out of my headlights for a week. And honestly, it did a phenomenal job. I mean, look how clean that is right there. So, um, and that, that I'm glad for, because I don't want to have to go in here and brush it out. So, and I just used 
uh, burial grade uh, pipe wrap, <laughs> silicone pipe wrap, uh, just because it doesn't stick to anything except for itself. And I'm going to use that to create kind of a makeshift gasket around the ballast cables here. So, get my knife. Silicone is pretty strong stuff, so um, and I found so many <laughs> off-label uses for that uh, silicone tape that uh, it, it's like duct tape. It's great. Okay, so now we're in. I put a little zip tie here to hold that stuff in place, so I'm going to remove that, and then we're going to try out these uh, deeper uh, covers. All right, so you can see the new HID headlight right here and the little gasket, uh, the grommet or whatever that it came with. And it looks like it'll fit in that hole, okay? It's not quite as stout as this one, but uh, I think it'll do just nicely, especially, especially since it's kind of formed all around these wires anyway. It looks like it's going to keep the dirt out just fine. And then I got my high beam bulb here, which is just a, a low profile uh, LED bulb. Um, because this is a quad projector high beam, I'm not too concerned about how bright this one is because this one's doing all the work. Uh, when that shutter goes up, it, it, it's amazing how bright that thing is. And this thing does help, don't get me wrong, but I just wanted something that was instant on, instant off for if I have to signal somebody at night with my high beams. Uh, it's not going to have to ramp up or anything like that. It's just instantaneous. Um, okay, so first thing, let's unplug the ballast. So I guess my biggest concern with this kit is whether or not this was going to stick up too far and make contact with this. And so we're going to do a quick test to see if it closes properly over it. And it does. Yeah, it does nicely. Um, the, uh, the grommet here kind of gets pushed up a little bit by the wiring. Let's see if I can slide it down the wires a little bit. Okay, so I just wanted to point out really quick, I tried again with these wires. These two high voltage wires that uh, come from the ballast back into the bulb, these are the ones that were pushing it up. So I just slid the uh, grommet all the way down, pretty much almost touching the bulb, but not quite. There's, there's about this much space. Um, and now the, the grommet is sitting just right on the... On the dust cover. So once you get all of these tightened down, then you're going to have your nice dust proof uh, housing in place. And then you can put it back in the truck. One thing to note this particular screw right here. Um, I'll pull out the old dust cover so you can see. Um, it's kind of recessed down a little bit. Uh, made it a little bit difficult, but not impossible, to get a socket down inside there. I had to use a smaller diameter socket um, to get it down inside there. Um, and that worked for this one. On this one, however, uh, it's a little bit trickier to get that... Uh, that socket down in there. So um, honestly, it's probably okay if this one's not perfectly tight because you still got these corners right here and then you got the other sides that are holding it down. Um, I don't see any air gaps or anything like that with this thing being a little bit loose. I'm going to give it my best to tighten it, but I'd probably say if you can't, uh, don't sweat it to the point where you're losing sleep. 
All right, so I'll just show you really quick what I did. Um, there's this cable bundle right here. I just zip tied through the little mounting bracket here uh, to that, and then it'll just kind of sit back here out of the way. So let's get that uh, headlight put back in. Okay, the light's back in place. Solid, ain't going anywhere. The retaining clip on the back has been repositioned and locked, so it's good to go. I'm gonna turn the lights on. And voila. Okay. You can see it's getting brighter and brighter as the lights uh, warm up. It starts out kind of a bluish color and uh, then turns to a pretty nice color of white. Uh, not quite as crisp white as the fog lamp LEDs that I have in there, or even these uh, high beam LEDs. They're 6000K and the LEDs are 6500K. They're close enough that I don't care as much. When these were uh, when these were halogens and those were LEDs, it looked awful. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at the pattern here on the, on the garage door. So you can see both lights are on right now. I haven't yet, uh, done the, uh, the cut or the dust cover for the other one yet. I won't, uh, film that side, but you guys get the, the idea. So, yeah. This is good, and I am super happy with those lights. So if anybody's questioning whether or not those innovated lights work on their RAM, uh, because it says on Amazon's site uh, that they're not compatible, uh, they are electrically and physically compatible. Um, I think the reason why they're incompatible is because of the, the PWM that you can't turn off unless you've got one of those... Uh, OBD2 dongles and the Alpha OBD uh, uh, software on your phone. Um, so if you want to use those, uh, they work and they work well. So there you go. Okay, and there it is all done. Both lights have been uh, successfully upgraded and had the new uh, dust covers installed. They both fit great. Um, on the passenger side, I had to find a different place to zip tie that uh, ballast to because the same uh, wiring bundle that I uh, tied it to on the driver's side wasn't there. Um, there was a little plastic bar that I tied it to on the top and then on the bottom I just tied the wires to the, uh, uh, the headlight harness cable. So there you go, HID upgrade invited make sure that you if you're going to use something that doesn't have a pwm decoder on it like the i think headlight revolution that's where i got the the covers from they sell a kit that uh, takes care of the pulse width mod uh, modulation um, without having to modify any settings in the computer but uh, if you're looking to uh, do it where you don't have to worry about a, an extra module. Uh, the ones from Amazon work just fine as long as you turn off PWM in the computer. So there you go.